you say what? Oh, for Christ's sake. It's the VMX Show, Season 7. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the VMX Show, Season 7, Episode 3. As you know, we took last week off um, because uh, last week I was too busy setting up the new PC to really do the VMX Show, but now it's all set up. Everything's good to go. I've been doing videos, so we're going to get right back into the swing of things. Now, I don't have a... Um, guest this week, but I do have a lot of news and some comments and questions and whatnot to get through. So uh, here we go. So uh, we're going to start off with CP Man 5 He says, dare I say, clearing it. I see what you did there. Anyway, I got a question for you. What is your top Flash game website? I enjoy using Newgrounds and Andro Ancon Arcade. Also, what is your pick for the Super Bowl? One, one last one. What games and movies are you most looking forward to the first half of 2013? Well, I already answered your last question. I talked about that last last time. Uh, Super Bowl pick. I mean, it, it kind of really almost doesn't matter at this point. If I was able to answer this um, two weeks ago, or rather not two weeks ago, but if I was able to answer it last week, I would have told you, you know, or, or even two weeks ago when you posted it, I would have said anybody but the Patriots, anybody but the Patriots, um, and they're out of it, and so I'm happy. Uh, the Ravens, the Niners, I mean, they're both great teams. I kind of think that the, the 49ers will probably win it, but, um, you know, like, I, I'm not rooting for one or the other. I think they're, like I said, they're both great teams, and I think it's going to be a great game. And that's really what matters. Uh, my top Flash game website is Congregate. I, I think Newgrounds is just terrible. I don't know why you would use that when there's many other greater sites out there. And I've never heard of Ancon Arcade, but there you go. Uh, did I miss anything? Okay, no, I didn't. All right, Zombie Rusha says, I completely disagree, Necro. The DMCA is not the same thing as the Copyright Act. I never said it was. Copyright infringement would still be a crime under the Copyright Act, but what the DMCA does is remove due process. YouTube has to take down new video first. Well, that's because of the good faith clause. Um, if uh, a copyright claim comes through, they remove it due to the... It be, uh, they believe that the claim was made in good faith. Um... I think that the flaw inherent in that is that they don't they didn't take internet trolls into account when they wrote that law. That doesn't mean that you have to scrap the entire law, it just needs it needs some retooling. He says additionally the DMCA criminalizes the playback of encrypted media on unapproved devices. For years it was a crime in the US to play a DVD encrypted with CSS on the Linux OS. Well, um, you know, it doesn't criminalize it. You're using incorrect information. It doesn't criminalize it, but what it does is it makes them able to go after people and to sue people for violating the U the EULA, which is the End User Licensing Agreement. When you buy these um, media, you um, agree to the End User Licensing Agreement, and if they say you can't play it on encrypted devices, that is their right to say that as the creators and and sellers of that media and you're saying oh the dmca criminalizes it no first off it's not a criminal offense it's a civil offense and it was always an offense the dmca merely gives them the tools to fight that now you may not like it but that has always been the case if you um pick up any piece of media and uh, look at a video game look at a look at a um the end user licensing agreement and those i mean you know you just click past it when you get something on steam or whatever but if you read it it tells you this is what you can play it on. You don't own things like games. You license them. So um, you just don't understand the language of law. I'm going to move on here. Dimebag Zombie says, Hey, Necro, thanks for the pointers in the GameCube, but I have a few more requests, if that's fine. I'm getting the Game Boy Player accessory thingamabobber. <laughs> yeah, I have one of those. And I was going to ask for three Game Boy game or Game Boy Advance RPG games you'd point me towards. Also, how are the Zelda games from the Game Boy or Game Boy Advance? Which would you say is the best pick? Um, Link's Awakening, but I'm going to go with Game Boy Advance stuff since that was what um, it was designed to play. So three RPGs for the Game Boy... Oh, okay, well, um, you got to have... I mean, it's sort of iffy because it's more action-based, but you got to have a Castlevania game on there, and, and uh, you got to go with Aria of Sorrow. Just an, a, a great story, great gameplay. That That's one right there. Um, if you if you want to go uh, the Final Fantasy route, uh, Final Fantasy VI Advance, it can be kind of a bitch to find, and then it's expensive, though, but you know, there you have it. And if you want to go with something like more new and unique, um, you know, there's there's a lot on there, but um, hmm, I have to think about that actually, because um, 
you know, I wasn't like so big into Game Boy Advance, but um, hmm. you know, actually, what I'm going to say for this is 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 for the third one, um, I'm going to say uh, go for the strategy route and uh, get Fire Emblem. Uh, Fire Emblem's a great series and a great game. Um, it's like it's actually actually like the almost like the sixth or seventh Fire Emblem game, but it was the first one released in America, so it was just called Fire Emblem. I'm going to move on here. Uh, Camilo Cadero, that's a new name, says, Necro, you missed the question about Persona. He was talking... I didn't miss shit. I'm going to move on. I'm not even going to read the rest of that. Uh, Shodate says, East 5 Expert is by far the best East game. You know, I've heard that, and, and you know, we didn't get East 5 at all here in America. We didn't get uh, East 5. We didn't get East 5 Expert. We haven't gotten uh, any remakes or anything. They haven't really done that, and... Um, it hasn't even been fully fan translated. There's been one guy who's been working on a, a translation for East Five, um, and that never came out. It, it never, he never finished it. Uh, his last update was in I think May of uh, 2011. So uh, we're um, we're all hoping that the uh, the Vita version of Four does well, so that they'll bring us a, a version of Five eventually. Uh, Tim Five says, "Hey, I got a question. What do you think about THQ going bankrupt? What will happen to their games they make?" Oh, your grammar is just so terrible. Um, well, I was going to talk about that in the news segment, but yeah, um, I don't care about their games. Um, the only game that they were publishing, not even making, but publishing, that I cared about was the South Park game, and it looks like the publishing rights have fallen to Ubisoft for that, and there's a whole kerfuffle about that, but I, I don't care about THQ that much, really. They, they were never that good. Let's see, Q306005 says, I agree fully with your advice on creating a gaming channel. I've just recently started a gaming channel, THB Gamer, and while recording my first few episodes, I realized just how hard it is to be entertaining while playing. Hopefully I can get better at it. I've only been at it a few weeks, and I have yet to find an audience, but I know if I keep at it, I do, I'll do. i do fine. Yeah, you know, you really just got to keep doing what you're doing. The, the problem uh, with people creating gaming channels now, I kind of had it easy in, in, in one sense at least, um... The problem with it now is that literally everyone is doing this, you know, like everyone that is on the internet and is a gamer and has access to YouTube is making gaming channels. So it's 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 tough to sort of uh, do something unique, you know, but I say just don't worry about finding the audience. Just do what you do and maybe it'll take off and maybe it won't. Uh, Aziz Light says, Negro, are you no longer going to put these up as MP3 downloads? Well, obviously not. No, I'm not doing that anymore. There's, and I went over this last season. There's many, many reasons why I'm not doing that. But I'm just going to give you one. It's a pain in the ass. It, it's a huge, huge pain in the ass to do that. Cobra DVS says, hey, thanks for answering my question. Good show once again. So I'm a big Zelda fan, starting Wind Waker right now, actually. And I love Skyward Sword. Now, I've only played three. Link to the Past, Skyward Sword, and Ocarina. Well, you've also played Wind Waker, right? <laughs> I mean, you did just say that. Love all of them, but I was just wondering, ex what exactly about Skyward Sword did you not like? The motion controls were a little irritating at times, but I dealt with it because I was having too much fun. Looking forward to the next Zelda on Wii U. Thanks. Uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't get this. Whenever I say I don't like a game, people are asking me, "But why? Why don't you like it? Like you fucking care?" I don't understand that. Like I have to explain my opinions to every single fucking person on the internet, and I've already told you guys many times what I don't like about Skyward Sword. It's linear, it's dull, and I don't like the gameplay, and I don't like the graphics. The music is good, but. Um, it's just it, it that series has has not really grabbed me since Wind Waker. Twilight Princess was fun enough, but the ones on the DS didn't really do it for me. And Skyward Sword, there's no exploration, and I've already been over this. And if you guys listened when I spoke, I wouldn't have to explain the same things over and over again. I shouldn't even have to explain my opinions. I don't know why I would have to explain my opinions at all, much less over and over again. Moving on. Savage Broadcast says some quick ones for you, Necro. Number one, what are some of the first films you remember seeing in theaters, video, TV, whatever? That's a good question. I'm going to come back to that and I read your other one. Uh, number two, is there any classic or old school gaming franchise you would like to see revive for a new generation? I get that question like once every few weeks and I keep answering it and I, and I keep getting it. So I'm going to skip that one. We'll come back to your first question. Uh, first films I remember seeing, that, that's a tough one because I actually have to sit and think about that like I, I remember movies that I saw you know like when I was eight or nine but going back further than that 
is tough, you know. I remember, you know, seeing some, like, cartoons when I was a kid. Like, I remember one specific instance. When did that movie come? Hold on, i got to look something up. I'm going to see how old I was at the time, because I remember this. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, now I would have been eight there. Now i got to go back further than that. Hmm. I'm trying to think about, like, you know, my earliest movie memories. And I'm not really coming up with much, you know, from my young years. Let's see. You know, I remember uh, I was never much for, like, too many, like, of the, of the kids' movies. Like, I did see them, but my parents seemed to um, push more mature movies. I mean, like, I remember watching a lot of horror movies when I was a kid, which, you know, really shaped being a horror fan. Um, I'm trying to think of like what the fr you know I remember I remember E.T. I mean I was only a year old when it came out in the theaters but I remember having the uh, the VHS tape and watching that and uh, when I was around five or six I remember uh, Star Wars um, by that time all three of them were out and uh, we had them on VHS as well actually we had all three I don't know how it even happened it must have been a weird tape but we had all three movies on one tape and i would watch that many times so actually now that i sit and think about it most of my earliest like very earliest movie memories have something to do with star wars so there you go all right i'm gonna move on all right alex shannon says how is skyward sword lame well i already explained that it's definitely the best zelda game barring an hd ocarina of time remake no it's not the best zelda game it's it's actually further towards the bottom of the middle of the heap it's not really a very good game at all he says the only people i've ever heard say it was lame is people who've not gotten the motion plus configured right well i already uh, you know you have heard me say that it's lame and uh, has nothing to do with motion controls it has to do with the design of the game and the fact that there's no exploration or no overworld and nothing to do except zip from one place to another on pre-approved paths and go re revisit the same fucking places over and over again. Not a very good game. He says, damn it, something got messed up. Yeah, <laughs> the Zelda series lost its way. He says, I have played uh, Resident Evil 1, 2, 3 and Outbreak. Somehow I forgot to add a good in that sentence. What? What are you talking about? All right, uh, think about Mario. I played all the NES Super NES Mario games to death. Think about BO2. It was at a friend's house and he didn't want me messing with the default settings. Well, okay, I remember what you're talking about with Black Ops 2. You don't want to mess with the default settings because it's the same control as every other shooting game. So to say it has bad controls, you're basically saying that the controls in every single shooting game are bad because it's the same exact thing. It hasn't changed since the invention of dual analog. I'm going to move on here. Um, Insane Wayne 253. Uh, I actually have to disagree with you on something, Nick, or I don't think Sony is going to exit the video game market. They took nearly two decades to cultivate just to piss it away. Uh, hold on. Actually, let me read the rest of it. I, I have something to say to that, but I'm going to read the rest of it. Sure, the Vita isn't selling well, but I seem to remember the PSP starting really slow, and everyone from the gaming public to gaming press writing its preemptive obituary. It's now starting to get some pretty good games. You're saying it's now the PSP is now starting to get some pretty good games. The PSP is, is dead in this country. They don't sell the games anymore. You have to you have to order them online. Well, I disagree with your comment. I'm able to defend your damn team to death. You're right. Just say he's a funny guy. Now, um, and he left a few more qu comments, but I'm going to reply to that. You say you don't think Sony is going to exit the video game market because they took nearly two decades to cultivate it. So did Sega. So did Sega. Sega was around. Um, Sega actually had been around since the 50s, making. Um, Arcade machines like uh, like the claw grip game, you know, where you get the prizes and, and amusements, you know, and things like that. And then they moved on to, you know, like arcade video games, and and then eventually they're they, you know they're making the SG one thousand and the Master System and the Game Gear and the Genesis and everything. And then the Dreamcast just did a little bit poorer than they expected, and they pulled out of the market. Now they still were a, a developer of games and a publisher of games, but now, even now, that's in danger because they're in serious financial problems right now. Just because a company has been around for a long time does not have a guarantee of them being around for a long time. Now, Sony's not going anywhere because um, Sony's a huge, huge company that does many other things that ha have nothing to do with video games, but I do think that the PlayStation brand is in serious danger 
especially if a, a brand like Valve comes into play and creates this mythical steam box that we've been hearing about because the goodwill that the Valve name has with gamers is going to go a long way towards that and they're not going to be able to challenge Microsoft or Nintendo as much but they can push Sony out the door at this point so Sony is I'm not saying that Sony is definitely going to exit the video game market or they're going to stop making consoles or whatever but I am saying that they are in danger all right, he, uh, he left two other uh, comments. Let's move on to the next one. He says, now my question, I have a few dollars burning a hole in my pocket and no, my pants are not on fire. Recommend me some games on Steam. I like good action RPG or even action RPG. I be just beat East Origin and that was quite fun. By the way, hurry up and get Chronicles of a Dark Lord on there. Hey man, t you know, uh, you know that Steam green light is not really what they said it was going to be. And uh, so right now we're just focusing on the, on the Xbox aspect of it. But... Um, you know, it's not up to us to get it up there. It's up to people upvoting it and, and talking about it and, and spreading it. So I should say, you should hurry up and get Chronicles of a Dark Lord up on there. We're trying. Um, you know, uh, have you played Dragon Age Origins? You'd probably love that if you like uh, RPGs with some action in there. If you liked East Origin, I believe Oath and Felgana and Ark of Nepi... Well, Oath and Felgana is definitely up there. That's East 3. And Ark of Nepishtim might be that's East 6. So you should check those out. I'm going to move on here. He has one more comment. A quick supplemental to my first comment. Something I noticed when looking through Steam is a lot of games produced by Microsoft, such as Fable, or even games already on the Xbox 360. I wonder if or when Valve do release a Steam box, would it cannibalize sales of a Microsoft console? Or hell, Microsoft and Valve do a joint... Uh, he says join, but I think he means joint. Joint venture, thus in a way making Microsoft exit the market. With that said, what's your album of the year for 2012? Okay. Um... Let me uh, uh, comment on what you said. Uh, you, you certainly do bring up a point about a lot of the games that are on Steam also being on Xbox 360, but the thing is um, Microsoft will still be making money off of it. The reason that you can't touch really the Xbox console and is sort of the community that's been around it. What the Steam box is going to appeal to is people who want that higher end thing it's actually going to appeal to people who bought the playstation 3 because it's going to be the pc gamers who want as close to pc as possible but they want to sit you know with a controller on a television and enjoy it that way album of the year for 2012 this is the first year that i didn't do my uh, my traditional end of the year list so because i just didn't have the time to put it through but you know what i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say it was the new rush album um which was called Clockwork Angels. There was also some great ones. Um, I'm just going to list a few albums that I really, really liked. Uh, uh, Swallow the Sun had a great one called Emerald Forest and the Blackbird. Um, Isis had a new live album, which was really good. I think it was called Live Six. El Viete said uh, an album called Helvietos, which was really good. Um, the new Bruce Springsteen, uh, shockingly good. Um, better than his last one, and they were saying that was the best one of his career. Um... Dragon Force actually put out a really decent album, which was the first album with their new singer. Uh, it was the Rush album I mentioned. That's my album of the year. And also Lost in the New Reel from Arian Anthony Lucasen. You know, that's another big one. So, uh, yeah, that's just a few off the top of my head, mostly from the first half of the year, because I, uh, you know, I got really behind on listening to new music and everything because I just don't have time as much as I used to. You know, two jobs, YouTube, everything. So that's what's going on there. Okay, moving on. Uh, Prince Boo eighty five says, um, "Thanks for answering my question. My new one is: How do you feel about the Arma three developers being arrested for espionage?" <sighs> I haven't even heard that. That's a new one on me. Um, espionage, really? That's uh, honestly that 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 sounds like that might be something kind of um, like a. a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a phrase I'm looking for. I I want to say that that's almost like a like a stunt, like a like like it's not even real. You know what I mean? Apparently, I'm I'm just reading this now. They they're they're released from jail after 128 days in custody. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna read this. Oh oh, it's in Greece. Two Czechs were arrested in Lenmos and charged with espionage, according to the Greek media. Okay, Greece is insane. Now I believe it. They're they're out of their minds over there. I, I, nothing nothing surprises me coming out of that country. They are absolutely bonkers. There's really... There's something wrong. There's something in the water there. I'm going to move on. Um, 
Huffness says, do you like the game Duck Hunt, and what's your record in it? Oh, I love a Duck Hunt. Record? Um, I usually get around, around um, like 30, 35 before I just get tired and then you start missing. Uh, uh, what do you think they what do you think if they release a sequel to Duck Hunt? Well, that hasn't happened as of yet, but uh, that would be pretty cool. Um, and the last two question, I think you mean questions. Have you seen the movie Sand Sharks and have you seen the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? No and yes. Okay, moving on. Oh boy. All right, more Skyward Sword stuff. Um he says, I happen to like Skyward Sword. Aside from the cheesy moments and the glitchy Skyward Strike, I felt it was good. There, I didn't flag anyone as spam. Take notes, people. Well, at least you, I'm glad you didn't flag anyone as spam. Moving on, Jared Barrow 12 said, um, Hey, Nicro, do you plan on playing a Bobo's Big Adventure as an LP or as a request? Already did it. Speaking of request, I think you should play Super Smash Flash 2 or uh, Bikini Karate. B I Submit a request, then. Kick as six one three eleven says. Hey Nick, I have two questions. The first is, what is your favorite Mario game, and what are your thoughts on Drake, the rape, the raper? I think you mean rapper, unless he really did rape someone, in which case that's horrible. But um, I think you mean rapper. Um, I don't have thoughts on Drake, and my favorite Mario game would probably be Galaxy. Moving along. Uh, Splashfire Zurek said, What you said about System of the Down being awful nearly killed me as they're my favorite band. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Uh, but it's your opinion, so I respect that. Um, anyway, my question is, uh, what is one genre of music you wish never existed? I would have to say dubstep, because not only is it hard to actually make, but it sounds so horrible. I can pretty much go all the way... I could pretty much go on all day about how shitty dubstep sounds, but like I write, like I wrote, it would take all day. Uh, yeah, um, I don't wish it didn't exist because I've used samples of it for zombie sneak attack just to make fun of it. If there was a type of music I wish didn't exist, it would be NSBM, which is National Socialist Black Metal. It really gives the entire black metal community a really bad name because of the National Socialist angle um, to this particular subgenre. A lot of people think that all black metal is about, you know, like white power and racism and socialism, so that's really kind of sad so i wish that didn't exist uh let's see moving along here king pharaoh sar oh oh king pharaoh sar okay that's clever i guess he says sony is the future i hope anyways it's a far better system however i probably play xbox more it's clearly complex lol maybe you can clear the confusion hats off to you uh if you did I think most of the confusion is coming from the fact that um, you have a very loose grip on the English language, and um, I would think that you're from a country where they don't speak English, but I just looked at your channel and you're from the UK, so there's really no excuse for what the incoherency there. Um, okay, um, let's see. Moving on here. Juicy Apple says, yo, here's my question for this week's shizzle. I played a Sega Genesis game in the mid-90s when I was just a little lad. The only thing I remember about it, Art, was a head-to-head -head fighter and a character in it that was either an ape or a wolf man, and one of the levels was woods based with, based with a big tree on the right side. I cheesed out all the most popular head-to-head -head fighters for the system, and I can't find it. Help me. I, I already posted it in response to him. I think he might be talking about Primal Rage. Other than that, I wouldn't know. Uh, he also says, I know I'm going to bust up laughing when you read the kick-ass comment. I don't know. I didn't really have a response. I know you're talking about the Drake thing. I really didn't have a response to that. I don't have any opinion on the guy. Uh, Drewland94 says, Hey, Nick, I love the show. I just wanted to know how far ahead in terms of processing power and graphics the PlayStation 4 and Xbox 720 will be in comparison to the Wii U. Um, the Xbox probably not very. The PlayStation probably very. Beyond that, you know, I, I, I think I think the, the next Xbox will probably be comparable to the Wii U in terms of power. I think the PlayStation will probably be more advanced, which is the mistake that Sony's going to make again. Moving on here. Mini Pulsey says, Hey, Necro VMX, love your work. I have a couple of questions. One, have you played Spec Ops The Line? And if so, what do you think of it? Didn't I put a... You know, didn't I put a whole uh, moratorium on, on in questions about have you played this and what's your opinion of it? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I have played it. I'm gonna move, and I've talked about it before, but... Ah, oh, God. I ask people not to ask me these questions. 
It's a great game. What do you want me to say? I mean, I'm not going to say anything that other people haven't said. What do you care? All right, number two. What do you think of difficulty settings in video games? Do you think they should always be available? That the difficulty is an integral part of some games, etc. I, you know, I think that it should be available. I generally tend to, when I start a game, to just play it with whatever the default settings are, and then I'll adjust it as needed. One thing that I've noticed lately with modern games, and I'm meaning games of the past few years, um, is that you've been able to actually change the difficulty on the fly which is really good because if you played a game and let's say you start on on easy for whatever reason and then you get most of the way through it and you're like you know this is just too easy and you want to change it to medium or hard you have to you used to be that you'd have to start it from the very beginning now you can actually adjust on the fly which i think is really good and i think that um you know customization is a good thing and it's a big part of modern gaming and, I, and i'm and i'm glad for that the Moogle Master says, I just a uh, 3DS a while ago. I think you mean you just bought it, you just got it, you just stole it, you just put one up your ass. What are you trying to say? Guys, I'm going to ask you this one last time. I, I think I might have um, I, I, I think I might have said this like a million times, but I'm going to say it one more time. When you are about to hit post, read your comment to yourself out loud to see if it makes sense. And I have the one game, New Super Mario Brothers. I think you mean New Super Mario Brothers 2. So I just got into the system, and I would like to know what games I should pick up next. I was thinking getting Chrono Trigger and the Dragon Quest games. Well, you're talking about DS games, so maybe we're talking about the first Super Mario Brothers. Why don't you get some some newer 3DS games? You know, like like um, a Kid Icarus Uprising, or um, I mean, if you're thinking of RPGs, I mean, there's loads of them. The new Fire Emblem's coming out in a week, so you know. I'm going to move on here. Uh, hey, Nick, just oh, this is uh, Kingpin Reviews. Hey, Nick, just wondering, what's your favorite of these food varieties? Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, Thai, or Indian? Ooh. Indian's sort of the odd man out, so different. Um, I'm going to say I have not had Vietnamese food ever in my life. Um, everybody that has been in the channel a long time knows that I absolutely love Chinese food, but... Uh, you know, I don't get it that often, but Indian food is is the best out of all of those. I don't, ju I just don't get it that often. Nettlebox says, "Do you have any opinion on?" Oh God, uh, I'm just gonna read it. I guess we'll see. On the Django Unchained toys being discontinued because people like Al Sharpton's group found them offensive. I personally don't get it unless they found the film to be offensive too. Well, that's the thing they did because they're idiots. Otherwise, the toys weren't depicting real slaves or slave owners, just characters in a film that weren't intended for kids to reenact slave violence with. I understand the Weinstein's not wanting to harm future profits, but it seems these PC worries are un unwarranted in this particular area. Well, you're right, but I, I got to point out that um, why are there even Django Unchained toys? I mean, that uh, that is a really bizarre concept when you think about it, because when you when you release toys, um, you know, from a movie you would think that that is a movie that appeals to people who want to play with these toys, which should be kids. The thing is, this is an a R-rated Quentin Tarantino movie. I think it's really strange for them to be selling toys. Uh, he also says, also love the show, just excited to see it in my YouTube box. Keep up the good work. It makes my days a little better. Well, what's wrong with your days to begin with? Hope nothing bad. Let's say, moving along here. John Stone knew... Um, Oh, he actually ha he actually says how to say it. it's just John Stone, 1985. Why what, what, why is there a W? Uh, I don't care actually. He says you're right about the Zelda games. It's bad since Matt. Oh, he's saying it's bad since Madra's Mask. No, 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 no. Wind Waker was awesome. Uh, and are you going to LP Rockman and Forte for the Game Boy Advance? Uh no, not not likely. Not likely. I'm not very good at that one. I that that one's really hard. Uh, Almighty Santa says in the last episode you mentioned Fantasy Star in the last episode and tonight I'm going to rock you tonight and I have to disagree with you Fantasy Star 4 is the only game in this series I like I haven't I haven't the first game in many many years that means he hasn't played it and the second and third game age very poorly well you say that but uh, you know you got to understand that Fantasy Star was actually really really cutting edge at the time and, and especially the first one a lot of the things that it was doing had never been done in an RPG before. Now that I think about the game that I thought was great, I realize it sucked, it would have to be Fantasy Star 2. Interesting, a lot of people like 2. A lot of people kind of put 3 as sort of the, 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 the black sheet. 
Here's one quick question. How do you think the Oscars will turn out, or do you even care? Uh, I barely care. You know, like, it's, it's sort of interesting that I don't get all excited about it. I used to years ago, but now I just don't care. Oh, and Zane Wayne is back. And Zane Wayne 253 says, How many dick moves are you personally guilty of? This is a reference to the zombie sneak attack song, Eating Pizza with a Knife and Fork and 32 Other Dick Moves. And he says, Do people at your work or personal life call you necro at a given moment? And VMX show wins, Killed by Death. <coughs> um, all right. The dick moves. Let's answer that first. I'm not going to say that I'm not guilty of any of those because there's probably one or two that. I have done at one point in, in my past, but and I don't I don't have the list in front of me actually. Like I said, I'm on a new computer, so I don't have every single file available. But um, I can tell you that I have never once in my life, nor will I ever eat pizza with a fork and knife. I think you're an asshole if you do that. You got to pick it up with your hands. It's a hand food. Stop eating with forks, you dicks. Um, oh, and, and as for people in my personal life or whatnot calling me Negro, it happened once, and I thought it was really weird, and, 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 and it, I just kind of had a weird reaction to it. So really, generally, and that was years ago, generally speaking, no. Uh, De, De Damod, I think? He says, now that Level 5's Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch is a PlayStation 3 exclusive, do you want to get a PlayStation 3? Eh, I will eventually. Uh, you know what, you know what, I, I keep telling people this. You know when I get a PlayStation 3? When the PlayStation 4 comes out. That's That generally seems to be how it goes with uh, PlayStation consoles. And by the way, it's not a PlayStation 3 exclusive. It's on the DS as well. It just uh, didn't come out here on the DS. So there you go. All right. Um, Nenson Dubois um, left a lot of comments. All right. He told me how to pronounce his name. I, I already knew that. That's how I was saying it. Uh, what do you think of unused Super Game Boy functions, and have you ever experienced... Uh, you've asked me that. Oh, and then he says, never mind, I asked that question already, I forgot. How do you feel about the cloning hoax? Isn't it scary? Well, if it's a hoax, it's not scary. Moving on. Last comments from Irish Tox. He says, Necro, do you dislike... There's only one S in dislike. Necro, did you dislike the Golden Sun games? If so, why? I'm not answering that. I, I You know, I'm, I'm so sick of having to explain my opinions to people. I, I don't like the Golden Sun games. Get over it. You know, I don't like Earthbound. I don't like Xenogears. Get over it, get over it, get over it, get over it, get over it. I thought Skyward Sword was lame. Get over it. <sighs> Everyone wants to focus on the things I don't like. <laughs> it's weird. All right. Well, let's get to the news, huh? Of course, most of the big news uh, from the past week or, or two weeks or so have to do with Nintendo. Uh, so let's actually jump right into that. The first big, big news out of Nintendo, uh, and this is a really happy thing for Wii owners and supporters of Operation Rainfall, the third game um, in the Operation Rainfall campaign, Pandora's Tower, is confirmed. I didn't think it would be. I thought, you know, two out of three ain't bad. We did all right. We got the last story. We got Xenoblade Chronicles, but no, we will be getting Pandora's Tomorrow sometime this spring. And uh, like the last story, it will be published by Exceed Games. So there you have it. So uh, thanks to Nintendo, to Exceed Games, and to Operation Rainfall and everybody that supported them for helping that happen. Um, so there you go. Um, that is going to be coming out here. Um, Final Fantasy had sort of a misstep, a major, major misstep. Final Fantasy all the bravest was released for ios there was a big teaser with some outlines of sprites that was released the day before and that was like the first anybody had ever heard of it and then like literally they released the teaser image and then the game the next day there was no trailer no screenshots just teaser image and then the game and i think that because they knew that if people saw this game that they would never ever buy it do not buy Final Fantasy All the Bravest. It is the worst thing to ever be released that has the Final Fantasy name on it. And I'm I'm being serious. It's just an awful, awful game. As a matter of fact, IGN, before they even did a review, they released a quick video basically saying, don't buy this, it's a piece of shit. We're going to release our full video, our full review, but right now I'm going to just tell you, it's a piece of shit, don't buy it. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Okay, now... Um, Anybody who's still out there playing Monster Hunter 3 Try on the Wii online, it's unfortunate, but the online servers are going to be going down on April 30th. So uh, if you're still playing the online for Monster Hunter Try on the Wii, it's going to be disabled, but 
if you go and you get the new version of the game, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate for the Wii U or the 3DS, you could play online there. So they're kind of hoping everybody uh, goes over. And as a matter of fact, it's going to be overlap. That's coming out on March 19th, so the six weeks to get yourself all set up there. Um, okay, now there's a new version of the PlayStation 3. I mentioned this um, last episode, a little of uh, the, the pure white PlayStation 3 that was coming out in Europe, and I didn't know much about it, but it has been available. You're going to, it's the classic white, it's called Classic White PlayStation 3 Stockpile. It's, um, that's finally over. And we're going to be getting this on, I believe, uh, January 27th, which uh, was yesterday. So that, that No, day before yesterday. So that's already out. And it's called the Classic White PlayStation 3 Instant Game Collection Bundle. So it's just like what Canada had and what Europe had. And what you get is a year of PlayStation Plus membership, a 500 gig hard drive, and it costs you $300. So there you go. So uh, that's that's what's going on with the PlayStation 3. We do have I do have a release date for the new Luigi's Mansion game for 3DS. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon will be released here in America on March 24th. So there you go. There is a bill in the House of Representatives right now. Um, this is not going to go far. Let me tell you what's going on here. Um, it's uh, Bill HR 287 of the Video Games Ratings Enforcement Act. And uh, there's three parts to this. The first part is to make illegal the act of selling or renting video games that have not been evaluated by the ESRB. The second part to illegally prohibit the sale of adults only or mature games to anyone under the age of 18 or 17 for the mature games. And to institute a fine not in excess of $5,000 in the event of noncompliance. Um, this is never going to happen. Uh, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. The Supreme Court already declared legislation such as this unconstitutional, and this happened way, 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 way back in 2011. Um, so, you know, if this even happens, you know, that, that happened in California, the Supreme Court said, no, it's, it's unconstitutional. So there you have it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just figured I'd mention that before anyone panics. Uh, now, I talked about Monster Hunter 3 uh, moving over from the Wii to the Wii U. Monster Hunter 4 is coming to the 3DS, and I'm pretty sure I've mentioned that. But if you're holding off on that, I'd let you know it's also coming to the Vita. Um, good news for Vita owners to get a good game. <laughs> okay, I got a lot of Nintendo news to go through here. Um, big, big news for RPG fans. There will be a crossover game between Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem, yes. It will be developed by Atlas, and it will be an RPG similar to Shin Megami Tensei, but it will have Fire Emblem characters in it. The, the, uh, the title is Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem. It's coming for the Wii U. There is a trailer available out there. It doesn't really show any gameplay, just like characters and such and art, but there you have it. You can check that out. E3 is going to be interesting for Nintendo this year because they have confirmed certain games that we've been looking forward to. Super Smash Brothers, as developed by Namco, originally was going to be developed by Project Sora before they went out of business, but we will be getting a, um, a, uh, a Smash Brothers teaser of some sort at E3. Now, they're talking about just showing images. They're show talking about showing images, like screenshots, and, and I would expect them to show some gameplay, a trailer or something, but, you know, anything at this point I think we'll, <laughs> we'll want to see from them. Um... You know, so you will be able to see in some form or another the new Super Smash Bros. game, which is going to be coming to Wii U and 3DS. We will be seeing that at E3. Also, there will be a new Mario Kart game that's in development for the Wii U, and it will be playable at E3, so there's that. And there is going to be a new Super Mario Galaxy game. Right now, they're just calling it the new Mario action game for Wii U, but it is being developed by Galaxy Team Project. So there you go. They made Mario Galaxy, Mario Galaxy 2, and Super Mario 3D Land. So... You know, that's that's a lot of things going on there. Wow. I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done. If you're a fan of Zelda, and really, who isn't? I mean, I, I didn't care for Skyward Sword, but um, there's still a lot of other great games. Wind Waker was the last game in the series that I felt was truly great, and it is going to be re-released on the Wii U in HD. It's called Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. And there are screenshots that you can see on the internet. I recommend you take a look at them. They look fantastic. Um, 
it's not just going to be an HD coat of paint. There apparently will be some new gameplay uh, features and it will be rebalanced and things like that. So it's not just going to be the same exact game in HD. So there is that. I'm not done with the Nintendo news. There's so much Nintendo news here. It's kind of almost ridiculous. Uh, I mentioned Pokemon X and Y already, right? Last uh, last time, I believe. So I don't have to really talk about that. There will be two new system updates coming to the Wii U. Um, one in spring and one in summer. It will have the software launching faster and you'll be able to return to the Wii U menu faster and it will bring about the Wii U Virtual Console that's coming in the summer. So that's, that's really big. Now apparently, um, apparently there's some confusion about this because what Nintendo said is Wii users who transfer their old games to the new system will be able to purchase them at a reduced price. And then people are saying, oh, that means I have to buy my games all over again. No, 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 you don't. It's It was just a little confusion with the language. You can just transfer them right over with an SD card. Um, but basically the prices on the virtu uh, on the uh, um, virtual console games are going to be very low. Uh, I think it's a dollar for NES games, a dollar fifty for Super NES games and such. It's going to be a lot cheaper. So there you have it. All right. Um, Game and Wario is going to be shown at E3 again, I guess. Uh, I'm going to see more of Pikmin 3, blah, blah, blah. There's uh, new footage of the wonderful 101 out there. Um, there's some Bayonetta 2 news out there, but uh, let's talk about some of the bigger things. There's a new Yoshi game coming out for the Wii U, and judging by the graphics and art, a lot of people are comparing the new Yoshi game, which you know we've only seen screenshots of, to Yoshi's story for the Nintendo 64. Some people are also comparing it to Kirby's epic yarn, especially this one screenshot in particular that it looks like it's basically Yoshi's epic yarn. That's what I've been calling it anyway, so there you have it there. Yeah. Um, and big, big news coming from Monolith Soft, the makers of Xenoblade Chronicles. There is a new RPG coming out for the Wii U that they're making. A lot of people are calling it Xenoblade 2. It doesn't have a title right now, but the, there's a character shown at the very end who looks suspiciously like Shulk and a big red X at the end. It's definitely Xeno something. This game looks fantastic. Fantastic! It looks really, really amazing. Uh, go check out the trailer. It's on uh, YouTube. Just look for Wii U Monolith Soft Trailer. So there you have that. One last bit of news before I get on to release dates and sales figures. Uh, it's always said when a game developer closes their doors, especially when they've had um, success in the past. I talked about Project Sora, who had developed the highly successful and, and, and commercially viable Kid Icarus Uprising and was working on the new Smash Brothers game. They got shut down there. They're done with. Um, Junction Point Studio is now gone. They've been shut down by Disney. They made Epic Mickey and Epic Mickey 2 The Power of Two. You know, the second game didn't do as well, but it's, it, like I said, it's uh, always a sad thing when that happens. And here is a uh, quote uh, from Disney. Uh, they say, It is with much sadness that we informed our teams today of changes to our games organization, which include the closure of Junction Point Studios. We're extremely grateful to Warren Spector and the Junction Point team for their creative contributions to Disney with Dip Disney's Epic Mickey and Disney's e Epic Mickey 2. Uh, Disney's Epic Mickey 2 was a failure that probably had a lot to do with it, but the first game was was good. It did well, so, you know, there you have it. Okay, so since this is the last um, the last show of January, let's go over uh, video game releases for the month of February. So here's what's going to be coming out in, uh, in February for video games. Uh, starting with February 4th, which is... Uh, <laughs> As next Monday, I'll be going to the game store then. Fire Emblem Awakening will be hitting the 3DS. That's a day one purchase for me easily. February 4th, uh, 5th, we'll see the release of Dead Space 3 for Windows, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. Fist of the North Star Ken's Rage 2 for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And Sly Cooper Thieves in Time for PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. February 7th, we'll see the release of Fist of the North Star Ken's Rage 2 for the Wii U. February 8th, we'll see the release of We Sing 80s, that's for the Wii. February 10th, we'll see the release of Brain Age Concentration Training. Uh, you know, they're getting very close to a game called Brain Age Concentration Camp. We just got to wa wa watch for that. That's coming for the 3DS on February 10th. February 12th, we'll see the release of three games, 
Aliens, Colonial Marines will be hitting Windows, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. Pro Evolution Soccer 2013 will be coming to the 3DS. And Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform will be coming to the 3DS. February 19th, we'll see the release of Crisis 3 for Windows, Xbox 360, and PlayStation, and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. February 27th, I'm sorry, 26th, We'll see the release of Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires for the PlayStation Network. Etrian Odyssey 4 Legends of the Titan will hit the 3DS. Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 Plus will hit the PlayStation Vita. And Rayman Legends will hit the Wii U. And on February 28th, Might and Magic Heroes 6 Shades of Darkness will hit Windows. You know, one thing that I'm not seeing, I saw Aliens Colonial Marines there for Windows, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 didn't see anything about the Wii U version. I know it's being released for the Wii U ver- uh, for the Wii U. It just may not have been written down there. I don't know if it's on the same day or not. Let me see actually. Okay, no, the Wii U version's not coming out on that date. Uh, they'll be coming out a little bit later. So, that's what's coming out in February. Now let's get to the old uh, the old swimming hole. No. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. It didn't even make any sense. We're going to get to the sales charts for the week. Okay, so let's do Japan. Games in Japan first. Here's the top 10 best-selling games in Japan for the week ending in January 20th, 2013. The number one selling game was DMC, that's Devil May Cry, for the PlayStation 3 that sold 112,406 copies. Animal Crossing New Leaf for 3DS sold 98,186 copies. Digimon Adventure for PlayStation Portable sold 47,036 copies. New Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS sold 17,299 copies. Monster Hunter Tri for 3DS sold 12,638 copies. Inazuma 11 Go 2 Chrono Stone, that's on the 3, uh, 3DS, that sold 11,292 copies. Tosuchu Siju Saikyu no Hunter Tachi Kara Negakari, that's on the 3DS. What a fucking title on that. That sold 10,915 copies. Paper Mario Sticker Star on the 3DS sold 10,634 copies. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for PlayStation 3 sold 10,315 copies. And New Super Mario Bros. U for the Wii U sold 9,469 copies. Over in Europe, DMC for PlayStation 3 was the top selling game with 43,566 copies sold. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on the PlayStation 3 sold 34,957 copies. DMC for Xbox 360 sold 31,024 copies. FIFA Soccer 13 for PlayStation 3 sold 27,006 copies. Far Cry 3 for PlayStation 3 sold 24,871 copies. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for Xbox 360 sold 34,368 copies. Far Cry 3 for Xbox 360 sold 21,913 copies. FIFA Soccer 13 on the Xbox 360 sold 21,599 copies. Just Dance 4 on the Wii sold 21,119 copies. And New Super Mario Bros. 2 on the 3DS sold 15,595 copies. In America, DMC for PlayStation 3 was the biggest seller, 163,615 copies. DMC for Xbox 360 sold 120,285 copies. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on the Xbox 360 sold 44,914 copies. Halo 4 for Xbox 360 sold 30,348 copies. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for PlayStation 3 sold 27,741 copies. Just Dance 4 for the Wii sold 25,910 copies. NBA 2K13, that's on the Xbox 360, sold 19,726 copies. Far Cry 3 on the Xbox 360 sold 16,657 copies. Connect Adventures on the Xbox 360 sold 16,089 copies. And Assassin's Creed 3 on the Xbox 360 sold 15,310 copies. So the number one selling game by far was DMC. Just want to throw that out there. Moving over to um, hardware. Um, The top selling console in Japan was the 3DS. It moved 86,936 units. The PlayStation 3, 19,484 units. The uh, Wii U, 16,373 units. The PlayStation Portable, 16,128 units. The PlayStation Vita, 8,846 units. The Wii, 2,052 units. The Xbox, 360, 621 units. And the DS, 145 units. 
Over in Europe, uh, the top selling console was the 3DS, 39,099 units. Oh, I'm sorry, no. No, that, that was number two. <laughs> PlayStation 3 was number one, 47,748 units. Then the 3DS, and as I said, 39,099. Then the Xbox 360, 30,437 units sold there. The Wii moved 12,891 units. Uh, the PlayStation Vita, 10,390 units. The DS, 10,050 units. The Wii U, 7,933 units. And the PlayStation Portable, 2,700 units exactly. In North America, the biggest seller was the Xbox 360, 46,933 units sold there. The 3DS, 40,404 units sold. The PlayStation 3, 26,503 units. The Wii, 14,307 units. The Wii U, 12,587 units. Oh, oh, actually, both of those are behind the DS. <laughs> wow, the DS had a surge. 15,739 units of the DS sold. Uh, Vita, 7,180 units. And the PlayStation Portable, 1,250 units. So, globally, the big the big bad is the 3DS, followed by the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Wii U, Wii, PlayStation Portable, DS, and PlayStation Vita. Well, that is, uh, that is the show for this week. If you want to be on the show, get on Steam. Let me know. We'll see what's going on there. And, uh, you know, uh, enjoy yourselves. Leave me your questions and comments. Please know if you've played this, what's your opinion or none of that shit. Please, I don't want that. See you guys next week.